Hello everybody! So in this video, I am going to show you how to install Android Linux on a regular desktop computer. It, I happen to be using a desktop. So here's the cool thing about this. Android Linux is the Linux used on Android phones. It's used on LG tablets. And it's used on a variety of things. Um, things that do run Android, which I'll explain in a minute, but first I could do the live CD or I could do the installation. I am going to go directly to the installation and do that. So the things that run Linux, phones, tablets, and there is a new dance machine out by, the guy, by a guy by the name of Kyle Ward. His operating system for it is Android that runs in the background so uh, I got this from softpedia.com I will be putting a link in the description to do that so anyway um, I installed this yesterday just to test it out and as you can see it says Android x86 now before I do that, uh, it comes both in a 64-bit version and in 32-bit. That's hence the x86. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do install it on here. And I'm going to use FAT32. So now the ext4 is a Linux thing. New technology file system, that's a Windows thing. And FAT32 is also a Windows. It's a file format most commonly, I should say, most commonly found on Windows. In Windows. So anyway, I am going to format it as a FAT32 just for demonstration purposes. And when this completes, you're going to be amazed. So it's asking me for GRUB. That stands for Grand Unified Loader, which is the newest. Um, I did this yesterday, and I'm just going to repeat the process. Since I'm just testing it, I'm not going to use it as a permanent operating system. So I'm going to click Yes. Now the file formats mentioned, NTFS, stands for New Technology Filing System. So if you ever played with Windows 2000, NTFS, that's Windows NT, New Technology. Uh, FAT32 stands for File Allocation 32, obviously, and XT4 is Extension. Windows 98, FAT32, 2000, new technology filing system. So it enables me to do both, which is really cool.
Okay, so this. On your Android phone or tablet, there is free space on the internal storage. So basically, this is going to emulate that. Now, I'm just going to leave it as the default for demonstration purposes. So, push enter in megabits. I could go more, but I'm just going to do, use this as a demonstrating tool so I don't need to go any further. Push enter again. So it's installed successfully. So now what I'm going to do is push enter to run Android 86. Now when I did this last night, it did crash on me a few times. If you notice down at the bottom there, you saw the home button, the circle, the square button, which en enables you to see everything by a box, and the back button. Now what you are seeing now is actual program stopping. And I used to get this on my an uh, Android phone all the time. So we're going to close that. So I'm in the U.S., so this is English United States. Yes, I'm there. There we go. And it will crash on me a few times, unfortunately. So we're going to do setup is new. So now you want to put in your email. So I am going to close the lens on the camera for this one because I don't want anybody getting my um, email. As you can see, it comes back to the screen. The problem is I'm not using the right, this computer has an Intel processor. It's recommended for AMD. So that's why it kept crashing. All right, so it's now, it's asking me for the agreement to agree. Now I got a notice on my iPhone that something else tried to log into this, which is this system right here that we are both looking at. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click Next.
I can copy my data from an iPhone or another Android device, but I don't need to do that. The thing is, this thinks it's a tablet. You see, it thinks it's a phone, but it's not. There we go. And I got this to work last night, so... There we go. So now down here we have something called Launcher 3, if you can see it on the camera, and Taskbar. So what I'm going to do is click Launcher 3, and unlike every Android device, it's going to ask if always or just once. So I'm going to click always. And there we go. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you have the back, you have the circle, which is um, basically a home button, and you have the square button. So now this is basically, if I will go into the settings, it's going to read it as a tablet image. So I'll go into settings. So if I click this. No recent items have been opened. So we'll do that. So now I am going to go into the Google Play Store. Just like a real Android device. I can get in there and download apps. Now, unfortunately, this is not a touchscreen monitor. I have one of these days I'll get the device to make it a touch screen and then I'll mess with this again. So for the sake of this video, yeah, there we go with the crashing again. So if I hit this up arrow, these are all my apps that are in here. So it's recognizing this as a phone, but this is a desktop computer. Now, the reason it says AMD is because Android devices use AMD processors. And I will be putting the download in the link of this video. Okay. So we'll go into settings. So, just like a regular Android device, it's, that's how it's going to display. Now, down here at the bottom, if you can see it on camera, it says about tablet, meaning that this image was from a tablet. Is basically what it is. So I'm going to push the home button. We're going to go back into here and I am going to download something that I did in one of my previous videos. So since I'm in the search bar, I'm going to type in TeamViewer. And as you can see right up here, it comes up with the real icon. This is the real Google Play Store. This is not an emulation or anything like that. It is the real Google Play Store. So there we go. So there we go. So 
so now it's right there so I am going to launch it just like what you would see on your phone or tablet so we're going to slide it sl oh. So I'm going to click done, and we got it. So there we go. So that works. Now you're wondering, hey, can I get Instagram on it? So we're going to scroll back. Whoops. We're going to do Instagram. It says download pending, but I got it to work. Right, so since I have little to no space, since it was so now I'm going to click continue and I'm going to delete that. So now it's downloading Instagram. Which, which can happen on a real device too. So to turn this off, you push the power button on your computer, just like a real phone or tablet. So now I'll click restart and the computer will restart. I happened to leave the disc in the drive, which I should not have done. So now, when I restart it, So in this case, you have to go what I call AT style when you want to turn something off. Meaning, I paired it with Windows. So anyway, what that means is basically on an old AT machine what you were doing is you would just click shut down and then it would say it's now safe to turn off your computer well basically with this same as the iPhone this is iOS you have to shut it down otherwise it doesn't work 
So, anyway, that is it for this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe.